I rank The Good Doctor as the second most accurate medical drama of all time. And then ABC gave me an exclusive first look at the season five premiere, which premieres Monday, September 27th, 10, 9 central on ABC. Let's see what Dr. Sean Murphy's up to this season. And huge thank you to ABC for sponsoring this video. Sean, Robert. Oh, look at them getting married. Everyone's suited up. Oh, storm incoming. Remember, those who are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder are susceptible to really loud sounds. They hear them louder. Uh, the processing of auditory stimuli is different. It can be very uncomfortable, so much so that they can have a panic attack just because of a loud sound or other external stimuli. Definitely the first gentleman to wear earplugs in the middle of his wedding. What's wedding like? norms. Is there bad luck if it's thundering and pouring during your wedding? Or is that like good luck, like a pigeon pooping on you? Oh no! Hi. I had a great time last night. Me too. Wanna go grab some breakfast? I gotta get to the hospital. Oh, don't do that doctor thing. I gotta get to the hospital. If you're having a person spend the night, eat breakfast, enjoy each other's company, plan for it. Perhaps I should let you go. No, no. I was uh, hoping for a little excitement this morning. Mmm, spicy. <sighs> Just give me two minutes to make this go away, yeah? So much romance, and the episode just started. Some uh, shortness of breath, occasional blurred vision and headaches, and this morning my urine was foamy. Is she pregnant? Because that could be a problem. Any blood in your urine? A little. You take 20 milligrams of Ritalin LA a day. For my ADHD. Blurred vision and headaches can be side effects from Ritalin. Would you be willing to stop your medication for a couple of days? See if they're causing any of your symptoms? I'll refer any complaints about my behavior to you. What's interesting to me is she's having a wide range of symptoms outside of blurry vision and headaches that warrant further investigation. Whenever you're trying to decide whether or not it's due to a medication side effect, you're trying to rule out any organic causes, then you could try doing things with medications. But jumping to medications right off the bat, unless it's like a really well-known side effect and it's only that one symptom, doesn't usually happen. We're gonna run some labs and do a CT of your kidneys. Let's say the foamy urine could be a sign of kidney stones. The first test you would do there wouldn't be a CT scan, unless the patient was having other symptoms like back pain. So I would do like a urine dipstick test, make sure that we have the presence of blood there, then send it out for a urine microscopy, see if there's crystals there. And then what you can do is you do a 24 hour urine collection to see the total amount of the calcium oxalate or uric acid or whatnot in the urine. Renal pelvis looks clean. You sound disappointed. But what's that? On the right kidney. Could be a mass. She needs a kidney biopsy. Interesting, for conditions like this, we usually page the interventional radiologist as well as the oncologist to decide if we see suspicious features on the scan. There's also conditions like polycystic kidney disease, uh, which you just develop a lot of cysts in your kidneys, potentially leading to needing a, a kidney transplant or even uh, having it become a fatal disease. Have you always had fat ankles? Rude. Only if the answer is yes. If the answer is no, it's a symptom. Edema uh, in the lower extremities for a young person could be a sign of proteinuria, which means she's going into kidney failure. She could have a nephrotic syndrome. She has blood in her urine, so she could have like FSG caused by HIV. There's, there's a lot of possibilities here. Are you overwhelmed planning the wedding because Park and Lim thought you might be overwhelmed? <laughs> no, I don't know. I've got it. It's gonna be great. <sighs> Great. There should be a term called whelmed. What if there's not too much, but there's a lot? Whelmed. Nice exposure of the right tonsil. Visibility can be tough with kids. That's true. When you're doing any kind of procedure uh, in their oropharyngeal space, it's sometimes hard to get a visual. There's a firm, irregular mass in this tonsil. Tonsil stone? Get that to pathology. I, I didn't quite see it. It looked like a tonsil stone. I hope it's not a, a tumor of any sort. Riley's throat, it's still really bothering him. We had to remove additional tissue because your son's tonsil showed signs of cancerous cells. Riley has cancer. The cancer on your son's tonsil is cervical cancer. Interesting. Cervical cancer in the sense of HPV-induced cancer. He got it from you. He was exposed to your cancerous cells in the birth canal, which he likely inhaled. Jackson may also have been exposed during birth. We need to scan both you. We definitely need to find out her pap smear results because that is how we screen for cervical cancer. The human papillomavirus, HPV, has certain high-risk subtypes 
that predispose you to the development of cancer. That's why we recommend patients to get vaccinated against HPV in order to prevent the virus, thereby preventing the cancer. It's actually one of the only vaccines that we have that prevents cancer. The PET scan shows increased metabolic activity in the mother's uterus and the son's trachea. Oh no. They both have cancer. Yeah, that's, that's the terrible part about human papillomavirus. They can cause cancer there in the anogenital region, oral cavity in the oral mucosa as seen with this child, and then it gets spread if it is advanced. Your cancer is quite advanced. Most cervical cancers are detected early with regular pap smears. I, this is a really important point. Not only should you be getting regular visits with your doctor for a whole host of reasons, but you should be making sure that your pap smears are up to date from the age of 21. It means that from the age of 21, you start getting them every three years. Once you hit the age of 30, the guidelines now change and say that we should do pap smears plus HPV co-testing, which means we also check for HPV at the same time. And if both are negative at that time, you could spread it out to every five years. Endoscopic mucosal tracheal resection. If Jackson's tumor was seeded via exposure during birth, which is a very reasonable assumption, then we can reasonably assume that it is localized. Endoscopic resection should allow for a recovery of days instead of weeks. Talk to the mother. But talk to the surgical team. Why didn't they figure that out? Sean is a super surgeon. You're at the mass. As a wide base. No easy way to loop my snare around it. Oh no, is it? Is it? Oh no. Pulsating? Is it a blood vessel? Is it around? Is it surrounding a blood vessel? It has a major arterial feeder from his aorta. We can't remove it from this angle without risking a massive bleed. The interesting part about tumors is that they go through a process called angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. They do this in order to keep themselves alive and to feed themselves to grow. And in those cases, you have to perform an open surgery where you actually go in and separate the blood vessel carefully while making sure that you're having adequate blood supply throughout the rest of the body. Abort the surgery. I think I know what they're gonna do, and I'm not a surgeon. I'm gonna try and predict it. I think they're gonna do a radical coil embolization where they're gonna go in through either a vein or the femoral vein, put in a catheter, and they're gonna embolize it like it, as if it's an aneurysm. Dude, are you serious? Hey, hey! I would like to um, make a toast. I have never ever seen you as happy as you are right now with Leah. He does look happier. Like when I think about the first episode of The Good Doctor that I watched on this channel, he looks much happier here. <laughs> there have been some ups and downs, a little bit like a roller coaster. Okay. But you guys have managed it so well. A whole lot better than I have. <laughs> Is that funny? But here's to many, many, many years of, of happiness. At least two, maybe three. What? That is not what you make a revelation. Revelation of that caliber. What are you doing? That was viscerally painful to watch. Dr. Lim. Excuse me, who are you? And what are you doing in my operating room? I'm Salen Morrison. What are you doing there? You're not surgically prepared to be there. That's dangerous for all parties involved. Please page Dr. Andrews and have him come get his patient. Or security? <laughs> oh, I feel... Something's wrong. Stat. What causes kidney lesions, shortness of breath, swollen ankles, and heart irregularities? Uh, amyloid deposits. A tumor that secretes some sort of hormone. Every time we get close to doing the biopsy on this woman, something doc blocks us. Unless, look at her blood work. She said she'd stop her meds, but her Ritalin level today is over double when she came in. That could cause her heart irregularities. That could. She is.
What? This is like out of this world. It doesn't happen, but it could happen. Click here to check out a full playlist of all my Good Doctor reactions. And don't forget to check out the season premiere of The Good Doctor, September 27th, 10, 9 central on ABC. Huge thanks to ABC for sponsoring this video. And as always, stay happy and healthy.